So we cannot have close alliance with an unbeliever. Someone who is not a Christian or someone who is not born again. 2 Corinthians where we read before chapter 6 verse 14. I'm going to read to verse 17 because I'd like you to see something in context. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what path hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and will walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out. Out. Come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So we cannot be in a close relationship with non-Christians. We cannot afford any form of intimacy with non-Christians. Your best friends cannot be someone who is not a Christian. It's unscriptural. Your inner circle has to change. Except nothing really happened to you. Except you are a false brother. Except you are a pretender among us. Except you are a wolf in sheep clothing. Or you are a false convert. If you are genuinely born of God. And you have experienced God's life. What God hates you will hate. You can be a friend of the world. And be a part of God. It's, it's not possible there has to be that change i'm not saying you shouldn't relate with people of course you should be friendly with people but you cannot fellowship with them you should be nice to people honor people respect people treat people nicely but you cannot make them your confidence you cannot make them your intimate bodies. It's not possible because you don't share a common affiliation. You don't share a common interest. Your interests differ. You cannot keep close alliances with people who are not saved. We also said you cannot marry an unbeliever. Whether as a man or as a woman. You cannot. You should not. You could not. You couldn't. You shouldn't. You wouldn't. You can't eat any one of them. So don't, don't even think about it. That means the minute you came into Christ, your long relationships changed. Because marriage is a lifetime. You cannot marry somebody who is not a Christian. You all know that marriage does not happen on the wedding day. I'm sure you know that. Marriage does not happen on the wedding day. The day you unveil and take off the veil from her face. Before marriage, there is a relationship. It is that relationship that ultimately leads to marriage. Now, you became best friends, you became intimate, you became confidants, you began to relate very well, and then eventually it built up to marriage. Of course, maybe you were friends in school, you were friends in your workplace, you were friends in your community, or you were friends in church. You grew in that friendship to where you knew each other to a point where you could trust each other and you discover you could live together for life. Now, you don't start going out on dates with an unbeliever. You don't even try that. Don't even give it a thought. Don't even give it a chance. You don't even tolerate it. Going out with someone who is not of the same faith with you. You should be so conscious of the Christ in you. That the unbeliever trying to befriend you is an insult to your sensibility. Because as you look at an unbeliever, you are seeing Satan's child. The moment you see an unbeliever, what should come to your mind? Is Satan speaking? That's what you should be thinking. And when you think like that, you can't even consider making him your friend. An unbeliever is a child of Satan. And it doesn't matter how nice and moral he is. His father is the devil. Mm -mm. So a new creation cannot marry an unbeliever. In the Bible, in Genesis chapter 24, Abraham was going to look for a wife for Isaac, his son. 
in those days. Then he called his servant Eleazar and said to Eleazar, you will promise me that you will not take a wife for Isaac from the Canaanites. Eleazar, you are going to get a wife for Isaac, but as you are going, you will not take a wife from the Canaanites. Promise me. Man, that was some level of operation. That is, you could pick somebody and tell him, go and marry for my child. Go and get a wife for my child. Keep that somewhere. Let me give you a second one. Back in the days, some of our mothers, they woke them up and told them, follow that man. And she went with him and they had a wonderful marriage. Keep that somewhere. Come, take your box. Follow that man. And she took her box without thinking and followed that man. That is marriage. You are looking at me as if you don't know what I'm talking about. Secondly, Abraham told Eliezer, my servant, this is Isaac, my son. Go, get him a wife. But she must not be from Canaan. Promise me. And Eliezer went and got a wife for Isaac. Genesis 24 verse 3. Put it up for me. Genesis chapter 24 verse number 3. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. Even though I'm dwelling among them, I don't want my son to marry their daughter because the Canaanites were a type of the unbelievers and the Jews were a type of believers. He said, only from my kindred, only from my nation, marry my, for my son from my tribe, my brethren, my kindred, my nation, my tribe, my brethren. That is only where you are permitted to marry a wife for my son. And Eleazar swore that that's what he will do. One of the sins of Esau in the Bible is that he took a wife from Canaan. Esau. That's why he was a profane person. He was a man of no value. Because he didn't value the things that were, 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 were the things he should value as an Israelite. He went to Canaan and married a, a wife. Just like a born again child of God in this church. With all this knowledge, you go and marry a girl that is not born again. And don't look at me like that because some of you have brought a lady to me that you want to marry. You are looking at me and I ask, are you born again? And she looked at me and she said, I don't know what that means. So what I'm saying is not, I'm not fabricating. I am just pulling it from the resource of history. And then the guy gets embarrassed. Fine girl. Empty inside. Empty shell. You are not supposed to marry outside your kindred. You are not supposed to marry outside your tribe. You are not supposed to marry outside your country. Now I'm not talking as a natural man. I hope you know. When I talk of tribe, I'm not talking of Ibibio. I'm not talking of Efik. I'm not talking of Ibo. I'm talking about your tribe. Meko tale ne kayada. You marry from your kindred. You marry from your country. You marry from your own people. That speaks to the church today. Because Israel was a pattern that God used to communicate to the church today. They were a pattern. So that's why no Israelite married outside of Israel. None. Because that was their covenant that God gave to their fathers. That that was the only way it was going to work. Are we still here? Now, you cannot marry outside your brethren in Christ. Not even boyfriend or girlfriend. It is an insult to any girl to befriend an unbeliever. I don't care what he does for you and your mother. It's an insult. It's an insult. If you don't like people looking at you and calling you idiot, then in befriending an unbeliever is idioting you. Makes you idiotic. It's an insult. It's like a, a human being befriending a dog. You can't afford to tolerate any such relationship with an unbeliever. Now, in fact, not even hanging out. You can't even hang out with an unbeliever. What are you guys going to talk about? Say so we're hanging out. You are an unbeliever. What are you guys talking about? What are you discussing? What did you find to talk? Politics? Only believers should marry believers. Somebody said, when I marry him, I will get him born again. Don't marry him. Believe for him to be born again first. That faith that you will use to burn him again when you marry him. Use the faith first. Let him be born again before you marry. Use that same faith. I know you are a giant of faith. So let that your faith get him born again first before you marry him. Amen. I said amen. Some say, uh, yeah, there's no problem. I know he's not really on fire. I know he's just a church goer, but he does not disturb my going to church. He even helps me to go to church. He encourages me to read my Bible. He even wakes me up to say, have you prayed this morning? I know he's not a serious Christian, but he is encouraging me. Your brain, your brain eh, is not together. Something is doing you to even think like that. 
is even an insult on you that is an unbeliever that is asking you whether you have prayed. He understands my church activities. He even drops me every time. And he makes sure I don't come late. <laughs> you are getting into a relationship with someone who is Satan's child. And Satan hates you. And you are tolerating his child. 